Hey, church, here with uh, Dr. Stephen Stair, Doctor of Internal Medicine over at UAB, but uh, also a trusted friend and member at Homewood. And we just wanted to take a moment. You know, I know there's a lot in the news lately about uh, vaccine that's come out and then also rising number of cases and, and all, all of these things going on. So we just want to take a moment. We've had Dr. Stair on a few times uh, during some different video opportunities, and he's been very gracious to come to us again just before the end of the year as we look toward 2021. Um, so, Dr. Stair, thanks for being with us. And uh, what what are some things that we can be thinking about? Maybe some things that uh, that you you would find helpful for us to know. Thank you, Brett, very much. And I, you know, I, I reached out to Brett this week. Um, I really thought it was important uh, that we talk very upfront and honestly about what's going on, about our cases, and also about the new vaccine. Uh, I actually had my vaccine on Friday. We vaccinated about six thousand people already at UAB as of today. Uh, I had a sore arm in my shoulder for uh, about 12 hours and got over it and had no problems with it. And so uh, there is so much uh, out there. Uh, I wanted you to know where we are. And again, I'm, I'm not with you as a UAB medicine doctor. I'm with you as a church member and a family member and somebody that I hope you've, uh, you know, I've been here for 30 years. I hope that you, that you trust uh, related to you know, what, what's going on with the vaccine. So what I did just, just to make it easy, I think probably, uh, most of you have, you know, have some of the same questions about the vaccine. So what I wanted to do uh, as, as I share my screen here is just maybe talk about the top five questions that, uh, that you might have. There are probably more, to be honest with you, but I think these, you know, hopefully these will help you have a little bit of uh, confidence in what, what's, what the vaccines do and uh, an understanding of, of where we are right now, December 22nd, 2020. So the first question I have uh, is, is where do we stand right now without a vaccine? And I just wanna give you some sobering statistics. All right, this is as of today, and this is daily cases uh, in the US. We are now looking at, we're, um, we are you know, seeing these cases skyrocket, to be honest, we have, you know, uh, I don't know, a significant number of cases, as you can see, and there's been these little peaks and valleys, but we're now at, you know, really one of the worst peaks we've ever seen. Uh, the next one is even more sobering, and this is daily deaths in the U.S. Uh, we're looking at between, you know, two and 3,000, 3,500, up to 3,800 deaths per day right now at the peak. And, you know, I know many of you probably have some connections with somebody who this has touched. These patients are generally older and vulnerable, but there are young people that are dying from COVID as well. The saddest part of this whole thing is that most of them are dying alone in ICUs, in hospitals, in nursing homes. And it's tragic. It's really tragic. Uh, let me give you some perspective on, on the deaths. And I'm going to say up front, I hear some people say, well, you know, this is just more of the flu. The flu, we, we see about 30 to 50,000 people die per year of the flu. And that's a lot. And that is virtually 90, 95% older adults with comorbid conditions. So as we take a look at our current deaths, we can look at the wars that we fought over the last 100 years, and we can see the total deaths in those wars well, as of today, we have 319,000 people that have died of COVID, okay? So I talk to patients and I talk to, to other people that say, no, no, this is really just the flu. Well, you know, the flu, we might have 5, 10, 15 sick people in the hospital at one time. Well, we have 10 to 15 times more of that right now. Let's take a look at our major wars and look at the deaths that occurred in those wars. And then let's take a look at 9-11. You know, 9 11, 3,000 people died. Well, we're seeing that number every day. So, where would we be, you know, without the prospect of a vaccine as we look at the rising cases, as we look at the deaths, see what's going on across the world in Europe and other countries as well? You know, it's, it's not even a, it's, it's something that's kind of unthinkable to imagine how many more people are going to die. And so, Let's take a look at UAB. So I'm, this is where I, I live. 
we've seen our cases more than double since November 21st. And as December comes and January comes, we're gonna see this probably increase at least 150 to 200% more because um, there are more people in close quarters, it's colder weather. We're gonna uh, unfortunately see holiday gatherings where COVID gets spread. And the people that we see at UAB right now, they're in the hospital, they're in the ICU, on the ventilators, are people that were exposed generally in large gatherings where people weren't wearing masks and they were too close together. So th this is our current situation. Trying to imagine, Brett, where we would be without the possibility of a vaccine is something that we can't even imagine, okay? So were these vaccines rushed and are they safe? I think that's a valid question. We had the structure of this virus in January. We had it mapped out about a week later. And ever since January, our vaccine experts across the country and scientists have been working to get this done. So the reason that they were able to go so quickly because they had, first of all, they had experience with a previous SARS-CoV uh, virus from 2003. So they knew a lot about the structure and they were able to pretty rapidly create that. And then the reason they were able to do these clinical trials so quickly was because there were so many people that wanted to contribute. There were 150,000 participants in four primary trials. And that's so far, that's just the trials currently. There are many more going on. So that helped us to have data available more quickly. And the positive outcomes that we saw helped us to get these moving along so quickly. I will say too, and I'll talk about this at the end about children, there is a large pediatric trial, multiple ones in progress right now. A little more about that later. We also have safety data on over 40,000 patients that got the vaccine in these trials. It was found to be safe and well tolerated. And I'll tell you, I had experience, had the vaccine. We've had again, thousands of people with the vaccine. Basically you get a sore arm for about a day. That's about it. These are the side effects of the vaccine. These have been seen in clinical trials, have been studied over and over. Injection site soreness, if you don't get it, hey, you're one of the 16%, congratulations. We see fatigue, we see headache, we see muscle pain, chills, joint pain, fever. These again, go down the list, they're a little bit lower incidence. They're all very short-lived, within 12, 24, maybe 48 hours. This is very similar to what you see maybe with a flu vaccine or maybe a tetanus shot. And it's also important to know that these side effects are occurring because your body is, the immune system is responding. It's an immune response to the injection. So really it's a good thing. You wanna see that your body's responding to the vaccine. This is um, a pretty amazing slide of one of the large trials. I think this was the Pfizer trial. And you can see up there at the top in red, is the mRNA, that's the vaccine that patients got. And again, this was maybe 60,000 people, 30,000 got the vaccine, 30,000 didn't. So let's look at the blue placebo group and see how many of them developed the COVID uh, virus, okay? So you can see, this is pretty much mirroring what we're seeing for cases in the community because there was no immunization. The red line at the bottom are the patients that got the vaccine. This is a 95% effective vaccine with minimal safety issues. So this is a, this is a striking graph. And those of you that aren't, aren't familiar with graphs, these are things that this blows our vaccine people. They, they really haven't seen another vaccine that does this. And, you know, as a Christian, as a, a person of faith, I, I think about how many months we've been praying for God to help us eliminate this vaccine. Well, you know, this is a gift. This is our, our scientists here calling this a modern day miracle. And Brett, I think about the guy that was drowning in the ocean where the ship came by and he said, no, I'm waiting for God. And the plane came by, I said, I'm waiting for God. And then something else came by, went all along. That's what God had sent. So, you know, in, in my mind, as excited as our scientists are here who have been studying these for years, I think it's time for us to really take a look at this in a different way and see, you know, we, we've got to take it. This, this is the only way that we're going to get out of this. This is the only way. Okay. 
So how do the vaccines work? And I'll just be brief on this. And I'm not a, a virologist immunologist, but I, I, just to, to explain, these are mRNA vaccines. We've been studying messenger RNA vaccines for 10 years. These are the first ones that have been produced in, in humans. And the reason that they're so safe is because they don't go into the nucleus of the cell. They don't go into the genetic material. They stay in the periphery of the cell. Basically the messenger RNA is in, encapsulated in a lipid coat, which is just a little fatty coat. And it's incorporated in the muscle, which goes into the muscle cell. The spike proteins, there's a spike protein on the coronavirus that the mRNA can help to start producing. And so it only produces the spike protein, not the entire virus. Those spike proteins come out and get into our bloodstream and our immune system, our antibodies immediately attack them. So we produce antibodies to the spike protein in the vaccine so that when our body sees the real coronavirus, it attacks the spike protein just like that and kills it, okay? So that's a very basic look at how the mRNA works. The DNA vaccines that you see in this diagram are also being studied. There are no human trials for these. They do incorporate the nucleus and the genetic material. So there's still, you know, there's a lot of work to be done on the DNA vaccines, but the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are mRNA. They're safe. The good thing about them is the mRNA breaks down immediately. So your muscles are basically a factory that's producing the spike protein. The messenger RNA breaks down quickly, it's gone. And so there's very little evidence that there's a long-term effect from this vaccine. Okay, there's no additives or all you've been hearing all these kind of crazy theories about other things that are in the vaccine. This is it. Um, the benefits are significant. The spike protein is just a small replicated piece. So there's no risk of infection from the vaccine. It does not go into the genetic material, the nucleus of the cell, if you remember your biology. It breaks down quickly. And also the best thing is we can produce large quantities in a short amount of time. We're gonna have 300 million doses of this vaccine within the next two or three months, okay? Um, important facts about the vaccine you need to know. The current mRNA vaccines require two doses. So the first dose will give you 65% immunity after two weeks. So if you get the first dose and for some reason you decide not to get the second, you won't be totally protected. The second dose, that's not DOCS, it's dose, sorry about that, gives you 95% immunity after two weeks. So if you get the Pfizer vaccine, I believe that's a three week apart, Moderna's four weeks. So after five to six weeks of the vaccine, you'll be protected, okay? Now you still need to wear a mask for uh, an indefinite period of time. And the reason for that is you could still be exposed to the virus. It can infect in your nasal passages and your mouth and you could potentially still spread that for a short time. They're still studying the antibody effect in the nasal passages. So we're still recommending that you wear a mask for the short the duration of time, all right? If you've been positive for COVID, many of us have, many of us have family members that have, you're actually immune for 90 days. That's pretty much universally studied. You're immune for 90 days. So you would wait until day 91 and past to get your vaccine. Okay, you don't have to be tested for COVID prior to the vaccine, okay? The duration of immunity from the vaccine is still being studied. We know we have at least 120 days in many of the trials and that's continuing to be studied. So we do also know that the vaccine gives a lot more robust immunity than the virus does. So if you have COVID, you have the antibodies to the virus, yes, you're immune, but we know that's not gonna be as long lasting and it's not gonna be as robust. So the vaccine we know gives much more robust immunity for a longer period of time. Is it possible that this might need to be a yearly vaccine? It's possible. We just don't know that yet. The other thing that we, we are very confident in, in my reading and research and talking to our experts is you're hearing about these viruses mutating, like in the UK, there's been some mutation. Well, this spike protein is pretty much universal whether there's a mutated virus or not. So it looks like from what we're seeing that this vaccine is gonna cross you know, mutated strains and gonna be effective against all of them, okay? 
when will the vaccines be available? That's the big question for a lot of us. Well, as you know, they're available now. There is a, a basically a rollout plan nationally that the, the federal and the state governments are following. It goes like this. Healthcare workers and residents at long-term facilities are currently being vaccinated. That's gonna happen over the next month, okay? Next is workers in essential and critical industries. So those are frontline, face, front-facing workers. Those are like teachers, uh, other people that work around other people. And that's January and February. Food industry potential, groceries, things like that. And then people at high risk for severe COVID illness. And there are you know, definite diagnoses. We know about COPD, diabetes. Uh, we know obesity is a risk for this as well. So that's being looked at very closely. And that's looking like January, February, possibly March. And then people 65 and over in the February, March timeframe. And then in April, April and May, most likely, that's when it'll go to the general population. It is free to everyone. There is not currently a, a model yet of how they'll be distributed from what I've read and talked to our experts here. It's gonna be available everywhere you can get a vaccine now. Grocery stores, Publix, they'll probably give you the $10 gift card for COVID too, okay? Drug stores, CVS, Walgreens, certainly your doctor's offices, urgent care clinics, there'll be many, many places you can get the vaccine. But it is gonna take some patience and it's gonna take some real you know, significant work on our part to continue the safety precautions, the social distancing, the mask until we get there because this is literally life and death for a lot of our, our people. All right, the last question, and this is, uh, involves a lot of our church family, is what about pregnant women and children? Um, that's a large, children are a large percentage of our population. And really to get to herd immunity, 60 to 70%, we have to talk about children. Well, pregnant women, we know, are at higher risk for COVID-related complications. If you're out there and you have a, a pregnant mom or wife, you, you really need to be very, very careful in the way that you're living your life right now. They get higher risk of respiratory complications. They have uh, more hospitalizations and potentially preterm birth, okay? So you, you need to be sure that you take those precautions. But fortunately, and this doesn't happen very often, okay? Most medical societies, they don't want pregnant women to have anything, even Tylenol, as you know, if you've been pregnant. Well, uh, yesterday, the American College of OBGYN came out and said, they recommend COVID vaccines should not be withheld from pregnant women. So it is safe in pregnancy from all the research that's been done. There's been a lot. So if you meet criteria and you're pregnant, you should get the vaccine. Your risk from having COVID is much higher than your risk from the vaccine, okay? So breastfeeding, same thing. You're breastfeeding, you can get the vaccine and you, you can, um, if you meet that criteria, okay? For pediatric population, this current vaccine that I talked about is only for adults 16 and over, okay? There are a lot of large trials right now in children. We need to get our children back to school. Um, it looks like since they're being so careful and so cautious that it's probably gonna be summer or fall before we have potentially have a vaccine for the pediatric population. So does this mean, you know, that they're going to go back to school in the fall the same way we're doing now? It's very, very possible, okay? It's very possible. They're going to be sure that this vaccine is safe. They're going to be sure that it's, it functions the same way in children. UAB is involved in a very large trial right now for that, as are many across the country in the world. So stay tuned. Keep your ears open uh, regarding the, the childhood vaccine, but it looks like, you know, that we're very optimistic that it's gonna be here, but again, it may be summer or fall. So there, there is a good resource. And again, Brett, if you wanna send out these slides to everybody, that'd be great. Oh. Uh, the CDC has a very good kind of eight things you need to know about COVID that talks about some of the things we talked about here, uh, but also has some other very good resources and other questions too. So I just, uh, I love our, our church family. And, and I know that there's a lot of, 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 of things being said off and on in social media and, and from other places. And um, I just want you to know that, you know, we, we only, and, and scientists and physicians uh, are not political. We only have your best interest in mind. 
And when we take a look at this vaccine and we see the hundreds of thousands of people that have been studied with excellent safety profile and incredible effectiveness, we want you to get excited about the vaccine. We want you to spread the word with your family and your friends. We will not get out of this until we get the vaccine. And there are so many more people that I'm concerned about are gonna, are gonna die from this and be critically ill in the hospital. You saw 221 today, patients in the hospital at UAB with COVID complications. Most of them from exposures, from family members, from large gatherings, uh, and also from nursing homes as well. So uh, I just, I really felt it was important for, for you to know some of the facts about what we have, the really the optimism that we have at UAB and, and in the physician community and the virology community right now that uh, we're, we have a light. And it really is, I think it's a blessing from God. I really do. And I think it's an answer to a prayer. So um, I really appreciate the time, Brett, that, that you've given me to, to share this. Well, you, you've given us a lot of insightful information. I know I've, I've learned a few things just uh, sitting through the, this as well. And uh, so appreciate your time. And I know, again, you're not coming to us as a, a doctor uh, so at UAB, even though that's what you are, uh, but you're also, you're coming to us. Just right. As a perfect All right. And so we, we're very grateful for that. I, just a, a question that popped in my head is, is uh, you know, as we just think about, you know, how we continue to, uh, uh, to, to function as a church family, how we continue to mm -hmm. do worship. Um, you know, one of the things that was pretty clear to me as you were talking was that we need to continue to be vigilant. You know, we need, need to continue to, uh, you know, wear a mask and we need to continue to stay distant as, as best we can. You know, so all of those things, it, would you like to say a word just to, as we're, continuing to look to 2021 in terms of our gatherings and what we need to be thinking about? Yeah, so we, we can't get overconfident. Uh, I really applaud the work that the, the team has done. Uh, I feel very safe when I come to Homewood. Um, I think we've got to wear masks. We've certainly got to wear them when we're singing. We've seen our members have COVID. We just have seen it. It's just going to happen. Um, I, I do think that we can safely worship in the way that we're doing it right now but we still obviously need to be ultra vigilant. You're right. Um, we need to sit separated. When you come in and you're looking for a place to sit, you need to be sure you're at least six feet apart from, from any other family that's not directly connected to you. Um, you know, we've, we've had a few, few crowds. We've had a few close, you know, close ones where people are sitting in the middle um, and that's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm wearing my mask most of the service and I notice uh, more, more and more people are as well. Um, we're fortunate to have a very large, big ceiling, which, which helps as well. But, um, you know, I, I think we have to be ultra vigilant. We've got to continue, uh, continue what we're doing and uh, pay attention in, in love. It's really about love for your neighbor. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, uh, we continue to, to pray, as you said, and, and we're very grateful for uh, this, uh, this uh, release of the vaccine. And again, your, your informative words that uh, kind of help us see the big picture of, of what's going on. And so um, uh, very, very grateful for that. And uh, you've been on speed dial for the past nine months for us as a reentry team and glad to do it. Thanking through it. all the things we're doing. So for that, we're, we're very, very grateful. But I know you love this church family. And I know, uh, I know you uh, want, want us to continue to, to do the things that we need to do to, to get through this. So uh, thank you for your time, Dr. Stair. Okay, Brett. Thank you. See you all Sunday.